unluckiest person in the world. I think it started the day I was born. My bad luck just got worse and worse, and my 18th year was the worst year of all. First of all, I was abandoned by my parents as a baby. My Aunt Carol took pity on me, and she took me in, but she already had a lot of mouths to feed. Her husband, Uncle Ken, and my cousins resented the fact that there was another baby in the house. They didn't like me. They pushed me around a lot. They liked to say that I had to earn for my keep since I was practically an orphan. So I never really had a family. I didn't have any friends either. The kids in my school said that they didn't want my luck to rub off on them. It didn't help that they named me Penny because soon people started to call me Unlucky Penny. That name followed me all until high school. I always got bad grades. I always got picked last for teens. Nobody wanted to date a girl who was born under an unlucky star. So I grew up to be the loneliest girl ever. I had no friends and no real family. I was just another mouth to feed. And if you don't hit the like and subscribe buttons, you might get unlucky too. Keep on watching and don't forget to leave a comment after. I heard a saying before that luck comes in threes. In my case, my worst bad luck cases happened three times as well. The first one was on my 13th birthday. I was walking home from school, completely minding my own business, when a beehive fell from a tree exactly where I was standing. At first, I didn't know what hit me, but suddenly, I heard the sound of buzzing. It got louder and louder. Then the bees attacked, with honey oozing down my face. The bees swarmed around me and stung me so many times. I ran home, flapping my arms over my head. When I got home, no one recognized me. My face swelled up like a balloon. Aunt Carol had to bring me to the hospital because I was in so much pain. Uncle Ken grumbled when he had to shell out a lot of money for medicine. We're spending so much money on her, he said, not caring if I heard. We just can't afford this. It hurt to hear that. It hurt even worse than the bee stings. When I turned 16, Aunt Carol said that she wanted to give me a sweet 16 treat. So we went out for ice cream, just the two of us. I guess she felt bad that I was always the least important person in the family. She hoped that I would grow up to be a good person. But I told her that I was so very unlucky. Don't be silly, Penny, she told me that day. We make our own luck. If you try to become a good person, you can be lucky. That night, I decided to cook dinner for everyone. I wanted to give them all a gift, even if it was my birthday. I was trying to be a good person, like Aunt Carol said. But while I was getting all my ingredients from the basement pantry, somehow I missed a step. I fell down the stairs. When they found me, I had already broken my arm and my leg. I had to wear a cast for months, and I was in bed for weeks. Poor child, Aunt Carol told me while sitting beside my bed. A lot of bad things seem to happen to you. I felt so miserable and unlucky, but I was feeling scared too. Two big things already happened. The third one was probably going to be disastrous. Uncle Ken didn't have Aunt Carol's bedside manner. He didn't like it that he had to bring my meals to my room. I know you didn't mean to fall down the stairs, he told me, but please be more careful, Penny. We barely have enough money to feed everyone, and now we have to take care of you too. I cried a lot after that. I knew I was such a burden to them. I had a lot of time to think while I was stuck in bed. I knew I had to do something the moment I got better. So the only thing I could do to save money was to get a scholarship. For that, I had to study really hard. So I did. Somehow my bad luck didn't affect my grades anymore. I started to get A's instead of C's in my classes. When I finally turned 18, I was feeling pretty good about myself. I tried not to think of the third big bad luck that was coming. I got a scholarship to college. It would pay for everything. When I got to college, I got assigned to a dorm room, and I was going to have a roommate. I prayed that she was going to be a good one. I was wrong. Jenny wasn't just a good roommate. She was a great one. We became best friends from day one. Jenny liked to talk, but she also liked listening to me. She's the only one on campus who knew about my unlucky Penny nickname. I told her about bad luck coming in threes. She told me I was being ridiculous. If you keep thinking about it, then it will certainly happen, so stop thinking about it, she told me constantly. Only think happy thoughts. After a while, I finally did. We made our dorm room the best in the building. We both made sure to keep it clean and tidy. 
We never got into any argument about whose turn it was to vacuum. It was the perfect living arrangement. Jenny was the best friend I could ever hope for. A few months later, Jenny turned 18 herself. She treated me to dinner. She wanted to do something that she couldn't do when she was just a minor. I know what to do, she said. Let's buy a lottery ticket. I was excited. I never did that before. Let's do it, I cried. So we went to the nearest convenience store and bought tickets for each of us. When it came time to choosing the numbers, I decided on the dates of my birthday. Jenny just used random numbers for hers. We were excited for the results, but the draw was in a few days. Meanwhile, we spent a lot of time dreaming about the things we would buy if we won the lottery. Apart from the usual shopping sprees and exotic trips, mostly I thought about helping Uncle Ken and Aunt Carol. Although Uncle Ken complained a lot about me, the fact still remained that he let me live in their house. They still clothed and fed me. When the night of the draw came, I was feeling very nervous. I felt like my luck was really going to change that night. But just before the numbers were announced, my tummy was feeling topsy-turvy. I gave my ticket to Jenny and told her that I needed to use the bathroom real quick. I did my business as fast as I could. When I finally got back to our room, I was half expecting to see Jenny jumping for joy. But she was just busy fixing the stuff in her handbag. Did they call out the numbers yet? I cried. Did we win? Jenny turned around to face me. Sorry, Penny. No such luck tonight, she said calmly. Maybe we can try again some other time. I asked her for my ticket. I wanted to use it for a keepsake. But Jenny said that she already ripped it up and threw them away. I don't want to be reminded that we weren't lucky tonight, she told me. I felt absolutely terrible. I really thought that I was going to win. Oh well, I replied. I guess my streak of bad luck isn't over yet. It definitely wasn't. The next day, my alarm went off loudly. Turn that darn thing off, won't you? Jenny cried from her bed. I mumbled an apology and turned off the alarm. I got dressed quietly so I wouldn't disturb her anymore. After all my classes that day, I decided to buy some dinner that I could share with Jenny. I was sorry about waking her up that morning. But when I got to the room, Jenny wasn't there yet. I tried to wait up for her as long as I could. Jenny didn't even go back to the room that night. The next morning, I was feeling worried. It wasn't like Jenny to spend the night somewhere else. I called her phone. She answered right away. She said that she had to go home for a few days. There was an emergency. I hope everything turns out okay, I told her cheerfully. I'll see you in a few days. It was lonely without Jenny around, but a few days later she finally arrived. She unpacked her bag and took out a lot of new clothes. Wow, I said. You didn't tell me that you went shopping. She shrugged her shoulders. She said that those were gifts from her parents. The Jenny that came back wasn't the same Jenny that left. Suddenly everything I did started to annoy her. She said that she was tired of cleaning up after me. I was confused because I always did my share of the chores. I tried to please her more. I thanked her for every little thing, but she always seemed a bit angry over something. I was very surprised when I came back to the room one day. All of Jenny's stuff was packed in boxes. She told me that she was moving to another dorm. Why? I asked with a whine. What happened? Jenny didn't answer me. She just said that she needed a change. So she left. The school arranged a transfer and I got another roommate called Mandy who kept mostly to herself. I missed Jenny a lot. She was my first real friend. And now she didn't even want to talk to me anymore. I tried to call her but she never picked up. The next time I saw Jenny, she almost ran me over in her new car. I was crossing the street when a red convertible nearly sideswiped me. I thought she would stop the car and check if I was okay, but when she saw that it was me, she just kept on going. What was happening to Jenny? She was turning into a mean girl all of a sudden. Are you all right? Said a voice nearby. I turned. It was my roommate, Mandy. I stood up and shook the dust off my clothes. Was that Jenny driving? Mandy asked. I nodded. Mandy sniffed and made a face. She's awful. My old roommate went to the same high school as her. She told me that Jenny is a snob. 
Besides, she practically forced me to leave my room so she could switch places with me. I felt terrible about my falling out with Jenny, but I didn't like hearing Mandy talk badly about her either. She's not that bad, maybe she's just having a bad day, I replied. But Mandy said that Jenny was truly awful. She heard that Jenny came from a family of gold diggers and opportunistic people. Her family's got a reputation of being thieves and criminals. Of course, none of them were ever caught, but everybody knew what kind of people they were, Mandy added. I felt insulted. How dare she say those things about my friend? The gossip was that Jenny was always finding ways to make money, even back then. Money is the most important thing in their lives. I thought about everything that Mandy said on the way home. Did Jenny resent that I wasn't able to split some of the furniture with her? Did she actually want a richer friend? It sounded ridiculous. I tried to rack my brains to find the reason why I didn't seem to be Jenny's friend anymore. I thought back to the day when everything changed. It was the day after the lottery draw. Suddenly, I felt a tingle. I took out my phone and searched for the winning numbers on that day. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. The numbers were the same numbers as my birthday. My ticket actually won the lottery, but I gave that ticket to Jenny. She saw that my ticket won, so she stole it so she could keep the money for herself. How was I going to get my winnings? How could I prove it? I found the lottery office online and went there myself. I asked them what would happen if a ticket was stolen. Could anyone cash it in? Basically, they told me that they gave the money to whoever had the ticket. No strings attached. But if I could prove that the ticket was really mine, I could charge the thief for robbery and I would get the money. But before I could accuse Jenny of these things, I had to find out if she really won the lottery in the first place. The lottery office couldn't disclose the name of the winner without their consent. I had to make a plan. I needed someone to do this with me. There was no better person to ask than Mandy. Mandy agreed to it at once. She really hated Jenny that much. She said that she would pretend to be a reporter, so she went undercover. She pretended that it was for a rags to riches story that was going to be aired on TV. Surprisingly enough, Jenny admitted that she won. How did you pick the lucky numbers? Mandy asked. Those were just random ones, you know, Jenny replied. Those numbers didn't mean anything to me. When I heard that, my blood boiled over. Those were my winning numbers. I used the dates on my birthday. Jenny was truly the worst kind of friend anyone could ever have. I knew I was going to get my third bad luck, and Jenny was it. I had to get that money from her because it was really mine. But how was I going to prove that I bought it myself? The convenience store, Mandy screamed. There must be a CCTV camera there. They must have videos of you buying that ticket. You can show your birth certificate as proof that you really picked those numbers. Mandy's idea was brilliant. We ran to the convenience store that same day to ask for the CCTV footage. We got lucky. Mandy charmed and wheedled and even threatened the manager to give us a copy of the video. Somehow, we managed to get it. We went to the police station the next day. We explained everything that happened. They believed us right away. When we took all the information to the lottery office, they believed me too. Then everything escalated pretty quickly. Jenny got charged for theft. All the remaining money was transferred to me. I even got the red convertible. I was so very happy and very thankful to Mandy. She was turning out into a much better friend than Jenny ever was. I promise that I will never do anything mean or illegal to you, she said with a laugh. You're a good person, Penny. You were just a little bit unlucky. Ha! Huh, that was an understatement, but my luck was turning now. I went back home when everything was in order. At first, Uncle Ken didn't seem too happy to see me. Did you get into any trouble again? He asked, feeling the worst. I smiled at him. I told him that I wasn't unlucky anymore. I want to thank you for putting a roof over my head, I said. Uncle Ken was shocked. I told them that I had won the lottery. Then I gave him the keys to the convertible. Aunt Carol started crying and screaming with joy. I can't believe it. I guess we'll have to change your nickname then. The best feeling in the world came over me when Uncle Ken gave me a hug. He cried too when I told him that I would help with the expenses from now on. I guess that was it. My streak of bad luck was done. Only good things were going to happen to me now.